was the U.S. government. Interesting, strange uh, bedfellows here, the NRA and the Obama administration. It was the Obama administration that, at the last minute, um, uh, ended these talks last July. Uh, you had the head of Amnesty International uh, saying this was a stunning cowardice uh, act by the Obama administration, with at the last minute did an about-face and scuttled progress toward a global arms treaty, um, so that people, especially the activists, couldn't even organize, because it happened at the very end. So NRA and Obama together, when here at home they seem like they have their sights set on each other. Let me make an initial point, and that is that the NRA has peddled untruths about this international arms trade treaty since the beginning. It has suggested that it would in some way impact on their ability internally within the United States to, to bear arms, which is an absolute nonsense. So not only are they strange bedfellows on the international stage, but even what is happening domestically should be put in its place by the Obama administration itself domestically. But it has used the NRA effectively, and I think for domestic political reasons, in the lead up to an election, to prevent the passage of the treaty. And yes, it was done in an enormously cynical way at the tail end of the negotiations that led activist groups and civil society in an impossible position. And even in the current negotiations, the United States has attempted to weaken the treaty in a whole range of ways, some of which, unfortunately, have come to fruition. And I think one has to bear in mind that there are massive interest groups here, the NRA plus the large defense contractors in the United States and around the world, who want to see as weak an arms trade treaty as possible, if there has to be one at all. And, of course, uh, this is in the context of uh, our nation being by far the largest merchant of weapons in the world, uh, dwarfing any other country in the world in terms of exporting of, of, of weapons of, of destruction around the, uh, around the globe. The United States sells and buys almost as much weaponry as the rest of the world combined. So what happens in the United States is absolutely crucial to the future of arms control in the entire world. So the influence of Mr. Lapierre can, unfortunately, be extraordinarily damaging. And I would hope that the sort of distance that has been created between the administration and the NRA domestically is replicated internationally once this treaty is passed by the United Nations General Assembly, hopefully last week, and that the untruths that the NRA has been peddling for years now about this treaty are finally put to rest.